Good morning, everybody. Um, so today I plan on completing lesson eight, which um, involves using the different color uh, tools in Adobe Illustrator. And um, so to finish it up, and then what I'll do, this won't take that long to finish the last part up. Um, I'll go back and I'll review what I covered yesterday and I'll hopefully a little bit more brief and concise, concise way. Um, so this is the start file. You see a skateboard to the left. You see a photograph of some fruit. And you also see an illustration <clears throat> of a dinosaur. Um, the point of this exercise, part of this exercise, is to be able to take colors from a bitmap photograph or an illustrated, uh, another illustration done in Illustrator and take the color schemes from each, each and apply them to the skateboard deck. It's a very powerful tool um, to recolor artwork. It's used all the time in graphic design. Um, a skateboard deck is a good example and that oftentimes you will have a single design but there will be a series of those boards and there'll be different color schemes applied to the same design. And that's also, it also applies to packaging, for example, gum, um, cereals, sodas, that sort of thing, where there's different colors, um, different flavors involved. So um, you can apply a different color scheme that's more suitable to that flavor. And you can go through a whole series of color schemes very rapidly. The other one down here, the bottom one, involves using um, the live paint bucket. <clears throat> I will give a brief demonstration on this um, that will depart from the book a little bit just to show you a little bit better what I think it, it's doing. And then, as, as I said, we'll go back and we'll um, uh, briefly over, go over some of the, the color options that you have in here, how to create new colors, um, how to copy colors, create new color palettes, um, or whatever you want to call them, um, uh, uh, color groups for yourself and that sort of thing. Um, very simple, but um, important to know and to learn about, especially if you plan on doing this as a graphic designer. Um, it will be very useful for you, um, both working with a client and just doing something for yourself. So um, as I said, this is the start file. The end file looks like this. So you can see that this color scheme here is based on the dinosaur. We'll do one also based on the photograph um, and we'll see how you can uh, uh, copy color, copy shapes and apply colors to them very easily. So I'm going to go back over here to the start file. And I'm going to zoom in. Oops, don't need to do it that much. Oh, fine. Probably should have restarted my computer. It's a little bit clunky at the moment. Zoom in a little bit more. So you can all see the skateboard deck and everything just fine. So what I want to do is I'm going to use the selection tool to click and drag diagonally over the skateboard to select all of it, all the shapes. And what I want to do is to recolor it. And there are a variety of ways to do that. What I can do that is over in the properties panel, I can click on recolor or at the top, since I have the classic um, essentials selected, I can recolor artwork using this little button up here. It's basically a color wheel. So I'll click on that. And this is the little panel that pops up. Right? So you can see that we have a color wheel. And you'll notice that there are these little dots of color. And there's a total of, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, which means that there are a total of six colors in here. And it's showing you, you know, uh, whichever color you select will be the dominant color that you can edit or manipulate. By default, they are all linked to one another. So that means if I select any one, for example, if I select this orange and I move this around like so, notice that the whole color scheme changed. 
it, it, that they are locked together and they can be, <clears throat> as you move around the color wheel, it will um, give you different color schemes and you can save all of these as different color um, palettes. And we can work down here and we can also, um, um, you know, this is the color, uh, the, the prominent colors, and we can also edit and change these as well. We can also unlink the color. So let me undo this and go back. So if I unlink and I decide, you know what, I only want to change the orange and I want to change it to a green, a nice bright green, then that's what I've done. And I can click and I can save that or I can go back and I can, or I can reset, go back to that. We can also use a different color library as our basis to change. Uh, remember we looked yesterday at color libraries. One of them was um, uh, using uh, color books. And these are where the Pantone colors were down here. And as I mentioned, Pantone colors are used in print for unique colors that you want when you print. And the reason that there are so many coded, uncoded, that refers to the kind of paper that you're using. Uncoded papers typically absorb a lot of ink and don't look, the, the colors don't look as bright as when they're on a coded piece of paper. And so they use different colors to adapt to the different kinds of papers that you would be using. Um, so you'll notice that most of these are color schemes for Pantone CMYK or Pantone solids um, uh, are applied to either coded or uncoded papers. So that's another option for us. Right now, we're not, I'm not using any color scheme. So one of the things that they want us to do is that let's use the color theme picker. And that could be kind of cool. So I'm going to click on that and it changes to a, um, an eyedropper tool. So what I can do is move this out of the way like so, and I'm going to click inside the photograph. And you can see that based on the colors related to that, the, where I clicked, it creates a new color um, scheme inside the skateboard. Quite nice, actually. Okay, so I'm going to go back to our original colors, and then I'm going to click inside the dinosaur now and show you what we can do there. Okay, so now we have that. Now we can also take down at the bottom here and we can um, show the saturation of these and we can increase the saturation so that everything is brighter or we can decrease the saturation so everything is darker. It's really up to you. Um, you know, you can create, it's kind of overwhelming how many different color schemes you can create amidst all of this. Really, really very nice. Very powerful tool. This has been in uh, uh, Adobe Illustrator for quite a while now. Um, and for graphic designers, it's really an essential tool. Um, it it's, would be important um, if you do plan on pursuing a career um, in graphic design to take a color theory class so that you understand your options when you use the color guide, whether you want complementary colors, you want analogous colors, you want left complement, right complement, but it gives you all these different options, which is really, really helpful. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that. Let's go ahead and close. And there we go. Whoops. Let me bring this back up. Now let's go ahead and um, talk about down here, <coughs> creating um, and using the, um, the live paint bucket. Before I use the live paint bucket on here and I create shapes, I'm gonna create a new artboard. Show you a very simplistic way of doing this. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, let's see, I'm going to go ahead and use my artboard tool and I'll select this artboard down here and I'm going to go ahead and make a, a brand new one based on that. Okay, so now I have a new one come back up here just to show you what I'm going to do. So I'm going to come to our basic shapes and I'm going to select the ellipse tool. And I'm going to create three separate circles here. So we'll do one here like so. And this is using the, 
um, I'm gonna go back to the default black and white here. Um, there we go, black, uh, white fill, black stroke. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make some copies of this. So I'll go ahead and I'll hold down the option or alt key. And I wanna make sure that they're overlapped and you'll see why in a minute. And I'll make another one just for the heck of it. Okay. So now I'm gonna come back and select each of these and I'm just gonna use the color spectrum tool to apply different fills. And I'm probably gonna remove the stroke from each just to simplify things here. And we'll take this one and I'll make this one, um, I'll make this one orange. Oh, actually, no, I'm gonna make it green. Okay. Whoops, I didn't want to do that. I forgot and I need to switch back to the fill. Um, let's go ahead and select green. And then let's select this one. And let's make this one kind of a blue. Drop blue. And again, let's take the stroke and make sure that there's no stroke. And I'll go back to the fill. Now what I want to do is I want to select all of these or some of them. You don't have to select them all, but that's what we're doing with the skateboard deck. We're selecting all of the shapes. And I'm going to turn this into um, a live paint group. So to do that, I go to object and I go all the way down to live paint and I select make. So now notice that the little um, um, boxes or little anchors or whatever you want to call them around the perimeter of this change slightly. So now what I can do is I can use a different color scheme if I wish, or I can come back and I can select. And I, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and I'm going to select the live paint bucket. And when I move over these, notice that they highlight in red. But when I, the parts that overlap, they also highlight too. So if I wanted to create um, a color that mixes both the green and the red, that would come out to be kind of a, a brownish color. So let me go ahead and come down here like so. And let's see if I can find something. And I'm gonna click on there. So notice that without you know, dividing the shapes or anything else, I'm able to change the colors within that. And likewise, the difference between this blue and green could be somewhere in between. But let's say I want to create something really very different. I'm going to go ahead and select um, maybe a bright yellow in here. But let's do, um, you know what? Let me go ahead and select, I'm going to select a bright yellow. And I want to put that in here. And I'm going to put that in here. So wherever the, the shapes are distinct, they can change. So that would mean if the red overlapped the yellow, then I would probably want um, an orange. So let me try to find a nice bright orange in here. Overlap like so. And you get that um, effect. And likewise, where the yellow overlaps the blue, I would probably get a green. Whether it's the, an accurate green, I don't know. But I'm going to go ahead and click in here just so you can see. Now, what makes this really powerful is that I can come back with the move tool and actually use the group move tool. Select any one of these objects. Hold on. Let me go back here. Oh, no, never mind. I want to use, I'm going to use the, um, uh, the, uh, the, um, the tool that's used for, um, selecting the live paint. So this is the live paint selection. So if I select this one and I move it, come on, let me move it. That's not allowing me to move it. Okay, it's not allowing me to move it. So let me use a direct selection tool. Let's come back in here. There we go. So now I'm moving it just a little bit and I'm taking this one and I'm moving this one just a little bit. Notice that the parts that overlap, those colors remain. So that al allows you a little bit of flexibility there. All right, cool. 
Um, it's useful in some instances. I don't use it all that much because I'll forget. And um, I don't know. I make more of a commitment to my shapes, but it can be very powerful in some instances. And that's what they're doing here. What they're doing here is we're taking one of these shapes. So let me go ahead and select. There we go. And I'm going to make a copy of it. So I'll select it and then I'm going to go ahead and hold down the option key and drag it down along with the shift key like so. Okay, make a copy of that. Okay. And now I need to take both of these and I'm going to flip it the opposite way. So we'll use the uh, mirror tool for that. So after I've selected both of these, I will now come over here and that's hidden right over here. That's under, if you have the rotate tool selected, that would be underneath that. So I'm going to select the um, reflection tool, mirror tool, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to come down here and hold down the option key or alt key. And let's go ahead and make sure that we have preview selected and it selects right now we have vertical but I want horizontal selected and notice that it flips it. So we've just made an exact copy of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and select copy like so. And now what I wanna do is I wanna turn this into um, my um, live paint, live paint shapes. And then I can just go back in and you'll notice that these little corner colors here because they all, um, or tangent with an edge, I can come back in and I can color them without creating separate shapes, just as I kind of did up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the whole skateboard deck by clicking and dragging. Then I'm gonna come back under object and I'm gonna go down to live paint and I'm gonna select and make. And now what I can do is I can come back and if, as I move over this with the live paint bucket, you may notice that there's a little, these little um, color bars there. Well, what I wanna do is I want to, I'm gonna close what I have here and I want my color swatches up and I'm gonna select from the, one of the, um, the color panels that I have here. Now, um, or color groups, whatever you wanna call them. I call them palettes sometimes. Let me go ahead and select, I'm gonna select this one. This, these are just bright colors. And I should be able to, when I've selected those bright colors, I should be able to scroll through by hitting the right arrow or the left arrow and it's going through the regular color groups and that, that's not what I want. I wanna come back here. Let's try this one instead and see if it will. Yeah, it's just going through our regular colors. That's okay. Let me go back up and let's select a color from here. Or you can just go back and I want an orange. So I'll select an orange from here. And now I can move over like so. And you can see that the little triangle there or a little, um, not triangle, but that um, chevron kind of shape is selected and I can select that and I can move over the bottom one here and I can just click the mouse and it fills it with that color. Now, likewise, I can select the yellow, okay? And I can move over these little corner areas and let's, there we go. Make sure that the arrow is pointing inside there. Let me zoom in a little bit and that might help a little bit. Okay, so let's go ahead and click there. So that's yellow and I can click here and that's yellow. I can click in here and that's yellow and that's click in here and that's yellow. So it allows you very quickly to work with different um, color schemes. It allows you to um, create, whoops, different, um, my computer's going nuts here. And on the fly, create different color groups. As I mentioned yesterday in my demonstration, what this seemed to be originally used for is that 
uh, people who, who design and illustrate comic books or work with animation and are creating um, backgrounds or they're illustrating and coloring the, um, the actual animated figures. Um, it was a very quick way to, to create a color group so that you have consistency and color and then go back in and select each of those um, characters um, and turn them into a live paint group. And then very quickly within that, that color group, um, go back in and change the colors. Okay. So again, I'm scrolling through each of these and it will eventually take me down. Yeah to the ones that I want. It's going through the whole colors, not the whole group of colors, and I'm not sure why it's doing that. I should be able to select a color group, and it should be able to take it from there. And it's not doing that, just scrolling over. No, maybe I wanted to pick from here. Let's see where it takes me. No, it's still working up there. OK, so that's that. So again, two very nice features. The one that really impresses me the most, though, is when you want to um, reassign colors. That one I find to be just really dynamic, really, really um, very helpful. You can also do that from photographs as well, which is really pretty cool. So um, this is an aside from the lesson, but that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that. I'm going to take this photograph, and I guess in layers it's locked. So I'll go ahead and unlock it. Um, da, 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 da. Go down to the bottom here. Oh, it isn't. OK, it's right there. So now what I can do is I can um, use image trace um, to trace this and take a bitmap image and convert it to a vector graphic. So what I want to do is instead, though, is I'm going to close this now that I do. It, it wasn't locked. It was select. I could have it selected. Now I can go to window, and I'm going to look at um, down here. I want, um, where is it? Should be down here. Trace. Um, Oh, image trace. There we go, right there. So that brings up the little panel for that. And I want to make sure that I see all the options. So let's go ahead and the threshold at the moment is set to a high end of 128 colors. We can also um, go ahead and trace and see what it does. And by default, it turns it black and white. This is what we did in one of the other lessons. You can use, that's the preset default. And instead, if you want maybe just six colors, that's not a bad number. And it, it does take a while to go through all these options and it basically posterizes it. So that's what I'm gonna work with right now. I have six colors. If I twirl down here for advanced, if you're gonna convert this into an illustration, you can determine the paths that you want them to be um, low in accuracy, high accuracy. Do you want the corners to be rounded or do you want them to be sharp? Do you want to remove noise, add noise? It's up to you. Okay. You can, um, options here is snap curves to lines. You can ignore the white, which isn't a bad idea. Um, and it gives you a preview. So there's lots of options in here, but that's not the point that I want to make. It's just that now I've broken this down into six colors. I could use 128 colors if I want, but that's going to be a bit too much. Now what I need to do up here is expand this, or I can do that in the properties panel. Either way, I'm used to doing it up here in the options menu. So now this is taking this in it from a, a bitmap and converted it to a, a vector object as a group. So when I select it, it's an entire group. If I come back here with the, select, the direct selection tool or the group selection tool, I can click in here and wherever that 
this color is. Let's see. Let's make sure that it's selected. Um, it's not doing that for me. So let's go back to the selection, the direct selection tool. Deselect. Now let's click in here. And with this one selected, this particular color selected, I could go back and let's pick a different color just for the heck of it. I'll close the um, um, image um, selection tool. And let's bring up the here and let's change this to yellow. And you can see wherever that color was, it's now yellow. Well, that's not exactly what I wanted to do at the moment. What I want to do now, though, is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select the whole illustration. And what this is going to allow me to do is to take with my color palettes here, and I can go ahead and I can say, um, I want to create a new color group. So here's a new color group, and I'll call it Fruit Basket. And I want to create a color group from the selected artwork. Include swatches for tints and all that sort of thing. If you want to convert process to global, you can do that. Um, it's not a bad idea. You can always change that, which is what we did the other day, from a, a global color to a basic shape, a basic color. Um, so let's do that. And I'll go ahead and create a brand new color group. And you can see here are the basic colors that we have here that were taken, or global colors that we were taken from that photograph. Very nice. So anytime you want to create a color scheme based on a specific photograph, this would be one way to do it. And you can go anywhere from <clears throat> um, one you know, color or black and white to 128 colors, a huge number of colors. It gets a bit overwhelming and it's a bit taxing on the processor of your computer when you use too many colors. Um, but it is a nice tool and it allows you to take and to integrate um, both photographic material as we did in one of the first lessons, we created that little fruit basket there. Um, and we took the lemon and we converted it to um, from a bitmap to a graphic or a, a vector shape and use that for individual elements, or you can take an entire photographs and then integrate with them um, vector based illustrations with them. Really, really nice. So um, that's all I, that's, we finished up lesson eight. So let me go back and review a little bit from what our other start file. I'll, I'll go to the end actually over here. Okay. So um, again, if you want to create a brand new color, there are a variety of ways that you can do that. Okay. You can click over here or up here or over here um, in the properties panel. If I click from here, right, double click it brings up the color picker. And right now I have um, only web colors selected. And I can um, then go about and select from the color wheel. You now, if I wanted to create a brand new blue, and then I can click inside here. And I want, if I want to select this as a blue, it gives me the color callouts. It tells me that it's 89% cyan, it's 11% magenta, it's 0% yellow and it's 0% black. Now, if I click on that color, um, it, will, it will not add it to my um, swatches, but I can do so in a, in a nanosecond. Um, also remember too, what I talked about yesterday, that there are basically two different color schemes or color um, types of color that we're working with in this program. Uh, aside from the spot colors is that either RGB or CMYK, and that you will, the default selection is in Illustrator is CMYK, which is used for print with offset lithography. And if you do anything for the web, um, it's, you're going to use RGB. Um, hue, saturation, and brightness, mm, don't use it much anymore. Again, for the web too, if you have a specific hexadecimal number that you need to use, that would be available here. 
to um, be able to incorporate the 216 colors common to both the, the Mac and the PC. So if I click this, I've added it here. Um, I've added it up here, but none of these um, shapes have been selected. So if I want to create a brand new color, I can just go ahead and I click this plus button here in the color swatches. And what that does is it gives me the CMYK color call out. I can call it, you know, um, sky blue. And I can add it to my, my palette here. By default, remember that it creates a global color. Okay. So, um, and what does that mean? That I can go ahead here and I'm going to add that to my palette. If I want to create a new color group, I click on the little um, folder here and I'll call it um, demo, demo colors. Name it whatever you want. And it added that to that particular palette. If I want to bring another color in, for example, maybe I want the, the violet or the purple, I can click, I can drag that into that group and I can click and drag to reorganize them if I wish. Now remember the purple was um, a basic color. This one uh, that I just created, the sky blue is a, um, a global color. So how does that, how is that affected? Let's go ahead and zoom in. And I'm going to select the sky back here and I'm going to select that blue. And let's go ahead and select the skateboard deck and let's apply that blue. Okay. So I could have selected them both at the same time and applied the color. But let's say I decide, you know what, I really wanted that color to be much darker. I only wanted it darker for this for the skateboard, not for the sky. But if I come back in here in the skateboard and I either click um, in my um, my color um, swatch here, or if I fill, you know, click the fill color here, really doesn't matter. But if I want to go in here and I click, double click to change the colors. Come on. Uh, no, there we go. Let's select here. That gives me a tint if I want. Um, let me go back. I'm going to go back in here. There we go. There's my, my computer just running kind of slow. So if I decide that I want a little bit more magenta in there, like so, and I click on preview, notice that it's not only changing the skateboard or the, the snowboard color, but it's changing the sky. That's because it was global. Okay. So let's just say, okay, change that. I want to go back to this other one and notice that it's updated here. But maybe I want a color that is global and a similar one that is not, that is just a basic color. Well, if I with nothing selected, if I select this color and I click the new swatch again, it's going to make a copy of it. So I'm going to go ahead and I don't want to name it copy. But this is, I'm going to turn off global for this, sky blue. And it won't allow me to use that. So I will go ahead and I'll make copy, or I'll just call it basic color. It won't allow me to use the same name. So there we go. So now we have another one that's identical to that, but is a basic color. So I can go back again and let's select this one. And instead I'm gonna use the basic color for that. And then this one, I'll go back and I'll select this one and we're using the dynamic color. So if I double click on it and I bring that up and I wanna bring that back to a lighter blue again or a lighter purple or some color like so. Select preview. Notice that the, the snowboard is not being affected now. You know? So um, we use this to add or to create new color swatches. We use the little um, folder to create a new color group. Um, we have our um, color libraries, the ones that we were using 
Again, in this particular exercise are color books and the ones that are specific and are used frequently in printing are the, um, the Pantone colors that you see here that are unique individual um, inks um, used in printing. Um, if you do use one of those, they can be converted to CMYK to process colors. Um, that's not hard to do. So if, um, for example, you'll notice this one right here is the process color, so if, or the, the um, book color. But what I can do is I can make a copy of it, just as I did before. So I'll go ahead and I'll make a copy of that. Okay, so I'll make it a copy. And now this one, I will go back in here. And I'm going to take, I don't want the color mode to be lab. I will make it CMYK. So I'm converting it now and it gives me the color call outs. And again, by default, it will be global, but I don't want it to be, um, I'll just Pantone Brown is what I'll name it. So now I have, again, a duplicate of that. Now this looks, um, let's go back in here again, let's see. I don't want it to be a spot color, I messed up. I need to switch to process color. And again, by default, it's global. But as soon as I click, notice that the little icon or the little corner symbol has changed. So this is my process color global. And if I wanted another one that was a basic color, I can make a copy of that and then un, you know, uncheck the global properties. If I want to come back here and I want to create here, I can also switch. Let's go back. I'm going to go back and make sure that this one is selected. And I'm going to select from up here. And notice that when you have a Pantone color, um, when you click on this little button up here for the color, not the color guide, but the color itself, notice that we can now create a tint from that. And then again, if you want to add that, once you've changed it, um, you can add that to your color um, uh, group as well. Okie doke. Now, one other thing that I wanted to um, cover right here is um, our color guides. So right now, since we have black, this is just showing various tints. But to use this, and it can be a very powerful tool, is that that's what they did over here, is that, for example, we selected this green color. And I'll hold down the Shift key and I'll select both of them. And now what I want to do is I want to select our color guide. And I'm going to switch from here to color. Uh, let's go to color guide. Um, I don't want tint, so I'm going to come up here. And I'm going to select, um, let's just look at complementary um, colors too. So based on the color that I've selected here, you can see here are a group of colors that it's created. Um, based on this green, and that these would be um, basically a group of colors based on complementary colors to that that are opposite in the color wheel. If I want, I can come back down here and if I want to add this to my, to create a brand new color group, I can. So if I do that, I can go ahead and I can click. All right, now let's bring up my um, color swatches and you can see that it added that added that, those complementary colors to that as a new color group. So now what I could do is I could select this color to that. Okay, so here's my brown, or maybe I want it to be kind of a, 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 another variation of that in the complementary color scheme. And then once that's selected, I can come back up to the color guide again. And you can see that it's using this color as the key color, that's what this one is. Now from down here, I can pick a tint or a shade from that, or I can come back and instead of seeing complementary colors again, based on that, I can come down here and let's pick analogous colors. 
we'll pick an, al an analogous two. So that just means that they're adjacent to this color on the color wheel. And again, if I want to pick from use, still use this as my key color I can, or if I select this one as my key color, notice that it's updating because I have these selected. And then if I come back here, I can always select any one of these from the tints or shades to get in the ballpark of what I want. So it's a very, <clears throat> having some knowledge of color theory really, really helps, but it's a quick way to, to, to create um, color schemes for yourself that work without having to know a lot about color itself. Um, anyway, that's about all I have to um, say today. I hope this has been helpful. I'm going to go ahead and um, <laughs> stop the recording in a minute. But before I do, I want all of you to remember that at the end of the week, um, the skateboard or the Tokidoki project is due. Um, I know I have on my um, this week in class, it's due Thursday, but it's actually the end of the week. And on the weekend, again, I will grade them. Um, keep working on the lessons. And at the end of the semester, probably the, at the end of the fifth week, I'll probably start giving you points for those. to see how many and I will probably, um, you know, how many that you've done. And I'll also go ahead and for those of you who haven't turned anything in, you'll be getting a little um, uh, note, um, an email saying that you need to catch up. That, you know, I'm concerned that maybe you're falling behind. Um, having said all of that, I'm kind of done. If you have any questions, <clears throat> um, please feel free to email me and we can set up um, an individual uh, session for you. Um, or if it can be handled by email, then that's fine too. So um, that's it for today, unless there are any questions from any of you. Um, so I'm going to pause my recording. Okie doke. So that's it for today. Um, see everybody tomorrow. Tomorrow I will start um, working, uh, showing you how to use text. So we're going to start with lesson nine and take you through that. And I may not do it in detail. I may just show you the basic principles of the type tool and how they work. And then we'll go from there. We'll see. You should be able to do the lesson yourself. Um, without too much of um, my help. Okay, so I'm gonna say goodbye and I'm gonna end the recording. <clears throat>